Welcome back to The Average Fisherman, everybody. So, got a lot of things to discuss today. Primarily, this new piece of equipment that I have sitting in front of me that I bought for a specific reason. And I'm going to go over it with you guys and, and let you know my thinking behind it and everything. So, backstory first. The last video that I made, and I've said, you know, I've let you guys know before, I cannot, it's just not feasible for me to record every fish that I catch. Okay, just sometimes I catch them unexpectedly or I may miss the button and I'm fighting a fish and I don't want it to get off, etc., etc. So, yeah, I was using the Shimano SLXA rods with the Fluger President spinning reels. And the day after, I was trying to put my wedding ring on and my hand was so swollen, my left hand, that I couldn't get my ring on. So I had to show it to my wife and go like, look, man, I can't even push it past this point of my finger because my hand was so swollen. She was like, good Lord, your hand is swollen. Even the back of your hand is. And it's because of the way that spinning wheels work. They, you know, fitting the stem between your fingers like that, you're gripping it like this and you're fighting the fish, you know, and all that. you're making these casts with these heavy popping corks and everything else. You know, just using my hand so much that day, it, it just swole my hand up. And it hurt, I'm going to be honest with you, like the next day my hand was sore. So I started to think to myself, you know, I'm a big bait cast guy for a reason. But all of the bait cast combos that I have are freshwater only. They're bass setups, right? There's only one bait casting reel that I have that is actually rated to be used in salt water. And that is, and it's technically not even mine, it's my wife's Shimano Curado DC that I got for her. Plus, the rods that I have, all these combinations hooked up to, are bass rods. You know, they're high modulus graphite rods. So, you know, they're made to pull up like a 10 or 15 pound fish at most, in, safely, and catching a 20 or 30 pound redfish on these things would likely damage those, those bass rods. Like, they're just not made for that, right? You, you, you fish your equipment according to what it's, it's made for. You know, and if you start getting too far outside of that, that, that realm, you can risk damaging your equipment. So, I needed a, a, a bait cast reel that was rated for salt water, and B, a bait casting rod that would very unlikely to get damaged by catching something like a 20 to 30 pound bull redfish on occasion. And I think I found just that right here. So, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to show it to you guys. It's this. It's a Fluger Monarch combo. Now, I know what you guys are saying, like, you know, these things are 80 bucks at Academy, and they're not. They're on sale right now, so I got one on sale. The cork is actually pretty decent cork for considering the fact that I paid less than 75 bucks for this thing. It's only three ball bearings, but they're shielded stainless steel ball bearings. This is a 6-1-to-1 one -one gear ratio, which is nice, because remember, the lower the gear ratio it is, the more power you have when you're cranking. The faster the gear ratio it is, the less power you have when cranking. So it's like a car transmission, right? The model I have is a seven foot medium heavy fast one piece. So seven foot medium heavy fast. And I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, the reason why I chose this rod is that it's not a graphite rod. It's a composite rod, meaning it's a blend of fiberglass and graphite. So, why did I get this when I'm such a sensitivity junkie when it comes to the rods that I own? Because in this particular setup, the sensitivity of the rod doesn't matter to me, and I'm explaining to you why right here. So this is gonna be used to throw popping corks, okay? So the sensitivity of this rod is meaningless to me. What I need it to be is tough, and that's exactly what I think it's gonna be. So, Fluger Monarch composite rod, and I'm gonna use it to throw a lot of the, you can see here I have this boom boom shrimp on here in shrimp Creole color. And that's what I'm gonna be using primarily for bait. So, and this is only 10 pound Hercules line. So I'm explaining all that to you guys. Okay. So high modulus graphite might be sensitive, but it tends to be on the brittle side. Okay, we've talked about all that with the resins and the scrims and all those kind of things in depth in other videos. So I'm not gonna go over it again in this one, but what you get when you get a composite rod typically is a rod that is a little more sensitive than fiberglass, okay, because it has a certain percentage of graphite in it. And let's be honest, this is probably low tonnage, like probably in the 24 range, or like IM6 or something like that. 
but it also has you know uh, graphite uh, fiberglass which makes for a really tough rod so what you're getting is a rod that's that's not really a specialist at any one thing like it's more sensitive than a fiberglass rod because it's graphite but it's tougher than graphite because it has fiberglass in it but it's not as tough as a full fiberglass and it's not as sensitive as a full graphite rod you get a little bit of both right but the sensitivity is irrelevant to me since I'm going to be using this combination exclusively to, to throw popping corks. So I'm going to have a cork in the water that I'm going to see go down. So I'm not going to have to feel or detect a bite or anything like that because I'm going to be able to see it. Okay. So that's why the sensitivity of this combination didn't really matter to me. What I needed it to be was A, inexpensive and B, tough. Okay. And I got this on sale. So it's not the best bait cast reel. I'm, I'm telling you guys that right off the bat. It's only three shielded stainless steel ball bearings, but I did throw it around enough, and it's it's plenty uh, smooth, and it has a magnetic um, anti backlash here, you know, and all that good stuff. And that's really all I cared about. So, you know, it, I should be able to throw this much farther, frankly, than I am the spinning combinations, because even if you use like kind, since this is braid and I had the braid on the spinning combinations, you have to remember the way the line comes off the reel. On a spinning reel, it still comes off like this and has to go through that stripper guide and, you know, it hits the stripper guide and gets, you know, smoothed out as it goes down, whereas a bait caster is more linear. The place where I fish, the distance of the cast and being able to get it to a certain spot is more important to me, frankly, than the ease of use of using a spinning reel. In fact, doing that over and over is part of the reason why my hand swole up because I was making really long casts and stuff like that. Whereas this bait cast setup ought to let me reach out and touch them where I really want the lure to be or my cork to be without having to really horse it out there because of the nature way a bait caster works. Okay, it's more of a linear pull. It's not coming off in a coil this way and then hitting this first guide and having to slap this guide and get smoothed out before it gets to go down a rod blank. It's already coming off in a straight line, so there's less mechanical resistance to the line coming off of this reel. To me, that's an ideal setup. That's one of the reasons I love Big Caster so much. So, you know, I'm hoping this setup, once something we're going to talk about in a minute gets sorted out down there, I'm, I'm looking to make a trip. I'm going to try again in the morning, but I can't make any promises. I was supposed to be there today, and I wasn't able to go, and I'll explain why. But, you know, this combination, being as it's under 80 bucks, even at full price, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that it, it does exactly what I need it to do. It's be a tough bait caster setup that I can throw in salt water exclusively for popping corks, so that way I can take my spinning reels, you know, those presidents on the SLXA rods, and use those for more of like the bottom contact jig fishing and stuff like that, like I would bass with finesse fishing. So that's my hope. So I got my my power fishing set up with the power cork now, or the popping cork now on this Fluger Monarch combination. And my bottom contact finesse fishing I can do with the spinning reels and rods combinations. And I think that'll be ideal. So let's talk about a couple things. We have this tropical storm right? That's like 2000 plus miles away and it's going into Southern Mexico. Now make this make sense to me. Somebody please. Because of this tropical storm that's going into Southern Mexico. Okay. We haven't gotten a drop of rain here, but the road that I normally take to get down to my saltwater fishing spot. And the reason why I couldn't go today is flooded. Okay. It's, it's completely covered with water and they're saying it's because of this tropical storm. Now, I live about 200 miles inshore, okay? So it takes me like two and a half, three hours to get down there. So because I live so far away from the coast. There's a place, there's several places that are just like, you know, 30 miles to the east of me. And they're shutting down waterways there because it's, it's flooding in the homes and everything else because of the, they're saying it's this tropical storm. Now, what they're claiming is that the convective circulation around this storm is in the high winds are pushing water basically back up the river, which is causing all this flooding. But the thing is, it's not really high winds. This is a tropical storm. So even at, at the worst, these winds are 45 miles an hour, 2,000 miles away, and they're saying that it's causing all of this flooding here. And I just don't think that makes very much sense. Because our state, Louisiana, supposedly spent tens of millions of dollars 
on flooding and storm mitigation uh, projects. You know, being as is Louisiana, though, everybody here knows damn well what it went to. It went into some politicians' pockets and stuff in the form of fucking kickbacks and stuff. And very little of that money actually got spent on what it was supposed to be spent on. Hence the reason why a tropical storm that is going into southern Mexico can flood out half of fucking south Louisiana. You know, even though it hasn't rained here a drop. So, anyway. Another thing, and the reason why I haven't been posting as many videos as I have lately is because my wife and I are looking at homes. And uh, we're looking to get out of this neighborhood, get someplace a little more quiet, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, side note on that too. The thing is the housing market everywhere is kind of screwed up, and I know everybody knows this. But what I'm finding after touring a bunch of houses and stuff like that is that people are really stupid. Like, I just have to say that. You'll, you'll buy a house for $220,000 and then keep it and live in it for 10 years and let it go to absolute shit because you don't do any maintenance on it at all. You know, there's roof leaks and stuff like that you don't take care of. The floors buckle or something like, you know, just general maintenance stuff that they just like, man, I'm not going to worry about it or they don't have the money to fix it. And then they'll turn around and try to sell that same house for like $320,000. And it's like people like me and my wife go in there and see it and go like, uh, this place is a dump. Why are they, how, who in their right mind is going to pay $300,000 for this piece of shit that needs like $60,000 in renovation to be done? Well, I can tell you who's buying up those houses. It's investment capital firms. And what they're doing, frankly, is they're buying up all these houses and then trying to turn them into rental units. That's exactly what's going on here. And then they're turning it around and, and renting it to people for two and three and four thousand dollars a month. Okay, and yes, that's really what's happening. So it's it's causing more price pressure, you know, and, and more and more people are getting priced out of actually reasonably priced homes. You can go back and see the history, you know, on how much these houses have sold for. You know, and just like four or five years ago, these houses were like one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, and now they're charging two fifty for them. You know, and, and they're getting snapped up as soon as they hit the market by investment firms. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So that's why I'm not making as many videos because we're busy house hunting and stuff and dealing with the fact that other people just buy houses and then sit on them until they fall apart and then try to get rid of them. So as soon as the flood waters go down a little bit, I am going to check on it throughout the day today. And I'm going to try to see if I can make it back down there. But, you know, that's that's the reason I wasn't fishing this morning. It's because uh, right before I went to bed last night, I was checking, and they were saying that they closed all the roads. Um, so I wasn't able to go. So I'm going to see if it goes down overnight tonight. And if it does, I'll be there in the morning. But if not, not much I can do when, you know, our state's stupid and pisses away money paying off politicians to make them rich instead of uh, spending the money actually doing what it should have done, which was protect our coast from this kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good Wednesday. I will see you guys tomorrow. Tight lines, my friends.